I'm a bit of love the gamers. My name is Jonah. It's like what, like 1 a.m. <laughs> in the in the evening. Uh, I gotta leave to visit my family very soon, so I'm traveling. Um, actually today, uh, if you think like clockwise. Um, but I gotta get this video out to you guys. Today we're talking about bunker comp and uh, more how we deal with bunker comp. This is something that more and more teams are facing on scrims and in future tournaments and also what people have been struggling with on rank ladder so we're gonna talk about how to counter well the different strategies or like some of the more different common strategies uh, for dealing with uh, bunker comp and general how to kind of work around that a like on the video always helps out subscribe bell notification if you like this kind of stuff and uh, give again let's help each other out a little bit here on the community so down below tell me what is your like if there's a go-to hero as a go-to strategy how do you or your team deal with bunker um, so that we can help each other out can maybe you have a tip or a trick that kind of helps around uh, a lot of people now That's uh, really been we will be focusing on kind of three different bunker comps We've been focusing on a fishing comp which I have made here with two snipers just because a bastion comp Which I think a lot of people as known as a cheese comp, which is uh, Very very frustrating to play with especially in the low elo ranks And then I've just added a diva bunker uh, which we might just take a look at which is more like a, a regular bunker That's not played with a hog um, so let's really talk about that. We're gonna run this as an area by two as other maps, but let's just start with the fishing comps, which I've saved somewhere here. Uh, here, double sniper. Oh, okay, so let's say that you guys are facing this. Uh, it's a defensive side, fishing sniper, right, bunker fishing comp, right? So they set up their, their things essentially with their snipers and whatnot, just whatever formation. Uh, and let's say that you play, for this example, we will use goats. It doesn't always really matter uh, but let's focus first on a, a goat comp so what we would like to do a lot of time here is one thing the first way to counter this is to there's kind of four counters that we can use you can either against a bank comp you can rush close or you can force a rotation you can two you can um you can you go in with a big smack with the ultimate stack right it's a big smack ultimate stack it's quite easy to remember essentially just you build up ultimate and you try to win out that of course you try to win fights but isn't it sending up your scene composition in your end game for we will just win with ultimates and really work that if you played on Paris, you've probably um, been experiencing that that some comps won't work number three is to run a surround and pressure comp which is essentially you try to surround them try to pressure them out weaken them this is normally run with like dive comp or heavy dps team composition so not something they would be doing a lot with a bunker uh, and number four is a dive onto them um, and all of these kind of tie in with num with a dive for example you will in a lot of time uh, be working on building up your ultimate stacks and with a dive you will also sometimes you know kind of go to three because you kind of want to pressure them out to kind of get them low so you kind of have a setup here so these kind of tie into each other um, but let's focus on on those cons we'll be running those in the different scenarios kind of posing guns and whatnot so the run close is the, the most common one that you will see a lot and that is you know stuff like for example uh, here on uh, here on hanamura is for example the reinhardt that would run path under here and in here with goats for example for example goats right or whatever that is essentially establishing themselves onto the objective um, this can be run multiple ways if you don't run goats if you have dps and whatnot uh, let's say you for example if you have tracer and somber you know your tracer can go through here your somber can stealth and, and go around to the objective your hammer can normally fling himself through right that's already half your team established if you have a pharmacy then the pharmacy can be flying somewhere here and applying pressure from main right at that point you have three players that can start pressuring the point from different angles uh, you have a pharmacy that's that's bombing up here and let's say that you have a a honors and the other that's kind of standing in main kind of healing and so on kind of fo forcing the team composition to more or less watch out a little bit right you can start pressuring the widow um, with some of your flankers and so on and again pressure the objective these kind of rushes are, are really really good because again a lot of these team compositions at this work really getting and especially uh bastion comp which we will be taking a look at it actually re removes a lot of the effectiveness from the the bunker comp but that's something that we see on on most map we see this a lot on king's row that if immediately you see a bunker comp on first point this is especially through skims and so on and let's say that you run goats or whatever um they play up here right a lot of time what the attacking team do the rotate through hotel go here and they start playing very close to the walls right forcing the enemy team to drop down and start contesting the objective um instead this is different from forcing a rotation forcing a rotation is, is a little bit different um because the difference is that if you're doing a, a force rotation, for example, on Hanamura, right? One of the ways to force a rotation on Hanamura, right? Since you cannot rush the bunker con, right? The bunker of course, set up here. So it can be quite expensive to do this rush as you will be exposing a back line, your front line will be weakened and so on. Um, a, a force rotation for a lot of teams will be trying to rotate through here 
take the high ground and then drop to the objective and then start fighting here. That way they've kind of, you know, rotated around the bunker camp and made sure the bunker camp could not do anything to it. The problem with how Hanamura is laid out is this will allow the bunker camp to just rotate themselves over to the stairs or to this part of the point or anywhere else to kind of set up so when the rotation has been finished, you will be rushing straight into the bunker again, which is not what you want. That's why, for example, Hanamura, a lot of teams will rush under it straight to the point because at that point, it's like if they are rotating, this rotation takes too long time, they will always set up with a choke, this rotation is dropping straight down into the enemy team, right? So at that point, you're stopping the not throw. So the rushing close is a really good way to just making bunker comps um, way less effective. It's also something that you will see on Nibane first point, that you will be rushing close um, in some, some way, shape, or form, establishing yourself on the objective against fishing comps and so on. you got to watch out for fishing comps. The only thing they really got to watch out for is... The, the, the halt and the hook combo is very important, especially D.Va players to eat the fucking halt. Which is, it's like your main priority if you run a D.Va, is to ease the halt. Uh, that way the hooks are very, is less efficient. And then watch out for wherever the crossfire on the, the Widowmaker is. That is like the two most important parts of denying the scene composition, right? Um, to talk about here, right, the bunker comp, if, they, if it's stupid and they set it up here, a lot of teams run under to try to set up here. They look really, really great in solo queue and not as much in swims, but in solo queue this looks really great. There's a lot of bunker comps will be kind of stuck here, you kind of rush under, establish yourself on the two detective, and now it's kind of like scuffed for them to, to recontest that. So, for double snipers, you can do that. You can also, you know, build up your ultimates, EMP them, do whatever you want, right, EMP blades, they are very, very common as of late. And some on the pressure we already talked about. Surrounding and pressuring out of a, a poke comp is not as efficient. Um, it's not something that you you can do, of course, but it's not as efficient just because, again, it's a double sniper comp. They are used to, to picking off squishies, DPSs. That's kind of like their motto, their big thing. So using running a, a kind of a, a heavy DPS comp, like a quad DPS, something like that, against, you know, enemy Widows and enemy uh, <coughs> Hanzos uh, with also Rissa and Hog sets you up for failure to since then if that the enemy team can actually just start picking off your individual dps's that can't really work so against something like that i highly recommend you trying to rush close you can of course dive dive is one of those things that you can do but at that point you will have to manage to somehow again get very close and then leap up and then do the dive and before again the enemy dps's get the longer you play away like a distance from a from a fishing comp or a double sniper setup on the bunker the more time they will have to actually land kills and put this in a 5v6 where they will have a great advantage let's talk about the passing comp the passing comp is like one of the big things that a lot of people struggle with so i think that this is like one of those that people we really really got to get covered like i've just added this with junk right i've done like the baptiste i've done the diva right i've done the with a junk right you could do this a billion ways just a mercy here um for reses right there's like something that I would expect and that I've seen is, is very common to see kind of ranked. Um, a lot of damage in it, a lot of kind of just general general cancer. Sometimes you swap her out for a for a hog as they like to fish some teams. Uh, I put her there because it gives a little bit more versatility for the team. This comp is very much the same. You can, of course, rush close or force a rotation, as we talked about, right? Rushing, for example, here and then straight under and then it's directly to the point, forcing the bass in. This comp, compared to, to a, a fishing comp, where you have two snipers that kind of can set up, set up crossfire. This has a far more linear way of setup. Even with a Widowmaker instead of the Junkrat, it's far more linear. And this has one great weakness that the other bunker didn't have. The other bunker only if you need to move two players, and that's a Rissa and the Hog, and whatever supports they're running with. That's kind of like the, the, the things that they need to move. The problem with this is that you need to also move the Bastion. So as soon as you force the Bastion out of third form, it's a really easy picking. Um, one of the things I like to really, one of the maps I really like to show this on is Paris. If I can find that, uh, sorry, it's super late. There we go. That's Paris. This happened in a swim a super long ago, like a couple of months ago, I think. Um, um, we were so the enemy team was was kind of cheesing this bunker comp because they had ultimates, right? And what they had done, I believe, if I remember completely correct, they had kind of set up the bunker comp uh, here on the high ground. They kind of set everything, you know, up here on the high ground and whatnot. Uh, with the bastion and all that stuff right so they kind of set up essentially majority of the players up on this high ground and so on of course there's a couple things they want to look out for you want to of course look out for the baptiste and then forcing these to rotate well, my team for some weird reason decided that pushing straight down main was the greatest idea ever right so here it can be kind of difficult to rush close you can rush close but here it's more about 
forcing a rotation and rotating around them. So for example, what you can do, you can force a rotation from right side. Let's use right side at, as the example here. So your entire GOATS team, for example GOATS, will be rushing right side and forcing a rotation by going here. At that point, the either the enemy team has to set up the bunker to kind of shoot straight down this hallway with everything like that, right? Which again allows you to split parts of your team. For example, you can send two people over to the point. For example, the Lucian Diva, while the rest of you push through, or you can push the entire team through here um, to kind of essentially envelop. If they play here, you can easily rotate down here. If not, then you can normally just do a, a straight up rush onto them. Right? At this point, it, it's also about playing close, right? If you can try to play a little bit closer, it works greater. But the whole point here is to try to force a rotation from the Bastion Comp. Force them to leave the turret mode, because as soon as they leave the turret mode, they get punished very easily. And the same goes if they set up, for example, here. This is another very common, another spot that I remember they were setting up on. I don't actually remember if they actually did set up here. Um, but here, for example, that's not a very, very common spot, right? And this is logically very easily done. You send your entire team right side which is left side here, right? Right side of you are the attackers. And then rush close. Because now the Bastion comp, because of the low gap in between here, you're kind of rushed so close that they need to un themselves and rotate themselves over to right side, which is going to be super costly for them. And we will be able to catch the Bastion out of turret form and easily burst through them. Even with Immortality Field, it's an easy cleanup on their part, right? So against these, you would normally, you like to normally either rotate, like get really, really up close, right? Again, stuff like Nibani, this can still work if the team is really bad. Um, or you will, uh, and on stuff like, um, and stuff like uh, Hanamura, this can work really, really well. Run under and then straight to the point to kind of force them to go to the point, but they can't really rotate. Or you will rotate yourself to force them to move. But again, rushing close to the bunker itself and to force them to move, right? A lot of time playing objective play is a really good way of forcing them to move. Big smack old stack always works just in ping the comp, especially this since it's so good. In ping, blading, bombing it, uh, what, what, wait for Rissa Shield. Uh, if you could force out the metallic field, that's really great. But especially like force out if you could, they don't have metallic field and they've just redeployed their wrist shield, you send a bomb onto them. That's a forced rotation from the Bastion. He has to leave a start form, which is a, an easier way to do it. Surround the pressure can work really, really, really great uh, against this team conversation just because um, you, you have so much kind of wiggle room to work with. So you would normally establish like heavy DPS presence um, onto that. Let's see here. Uh, they run a Bastion Bunker. Right, with their things, I'm just gonna kind of stack them in whatever order, right? Bam, 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 right? And you run a quad, for example, because that's, I think that's the only thing I have. Yeah, the only thing I have here is a quad DPS. Uh, that's kind of set, right? So this is set up with a hand. So, so again, you have kind of pharmacy here, right? You can easily blink the, the tracer through here and set her up on this high ground, for example. You can put the, the, the sombra on top of the roof here, right? You can set up the hammond inside here. And all of a sudden, this becomes more and more difficult. You can, for example, also rotate the pharaoh further over over here this way splitting majority of the tension and then there's only handsome main this is very very difficult for the banker to deal with because at this point the hammer can contest the point very easily they send down her she gets absolutely ass fucked and there was also weakness in the bunker they they leave the entire bunker right and they start like unmoving Para can cut of in, Hansel is up peaking aggressively, you have a Tracer coming from here, you have a Sombra coming from here, the Hansel comes from here and you're in immediately pincered. And if you stay put, we are right now capturing your objective, and we are also right now destroying all your shields. And setting up hacks, we are uh, hacking your resources you cannot, we are bombing you with Farah, which is like the important pressure here. We are rapid firing you and you cannot shoot all these angles at the same time, right? And what the enemy team, can, the only thing the enemy team can do is they can try to set up on the objective itself. Which and kind of like try to kind of bunker it into like a corner into a staircase, which again sets up the very much same thing. We can either just ult stack this, um, or we will easily be able to kind of set up multiple crossfires um, that will very easily be able to because of the the close nature. It's easy for fire to land hits, hands to land hits, and they cannot block every single angle. And their shields will break faster than we will because of the amount of damage we have. This shield will in general just break much faster than what they can. Um, than what they can sustain themselves. We can even swap the tracer out for another support since triple triple DPS is more metal right now than anything like that. Diving this is very, very, very difficult. The only way that you dive this normally is that you soft dive, meaning you, instead of diving fully in here, you normally dive on the edges to create pressure and to draw attention so that your DPS can do something. For example, uh, if you play ranked, you can do this with against you. We're using a soft dive with a diva that will matrix. Uh, they, again, important that you don't dive, for example, just straight through the gate. You need to get close in some way, <laughs> some way or shape or form, or you need to dive immediately with matrix. 
at that point you need to hit from two angles for example again let's just set this these a really quick back up we set them back up here um and ba bam Sombra, Sombra is kind of hidden high ground, right? You have, let's say you have just a, 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 a very, very like standard like Genji, Genji monkey die, right? The monkey will be diving, for example, going in here with the diva, going straight up, and then the Genji will come from here, and then the Sombra comes from here, right? Either hacking or hacking the Bastion, for example, or hacking someone else, and then start shooting. She will build the MP, Genji will be building Blade and Disengage, your monkey will land here on the edge to just test the kind of majority of the front line, the diva will fly up, head some missiles on the engage, and be present, they will then drop down here, and then you can now re-engage, right? The engage have happened, you build a lot of things, you, you force out some ultimates, you're now already close to the gap, and you're really, really close to them, with your tanks, with your DPSs, right, with your setup, and at this point, you can then decide to re-engage again and again and again, and they have up and down, uh, depending on your resources, especially since they are so immobile, and they normally don't play very close to corners, because you're so close, this dive can engage multiple times, over multiple stages, Drawing out resources, and again, setting up ultimate, setting up picks, um, and that's kind of the thing. Using the fact that this bunker is very, very mobile, and that she is real charge, she is real charge, she is real charge, all those are just easy EMP and blade cannons to build up your old stack, which is one of the weaknesses of bunker that you feed a shit ton ultimate to the enemy team. Um, the, the last one is a very regular, just a very regular, common, like the, the basic diva, diva that. Remember that if they play with a hog, they're normally looking for halt hook combos. If they play with D.Va, they have far more defensive capabilities and they have far more uh, verticality. So they can take a high ground, for example, away from you. For example, they, if they can fly up on the roofs here on on um, on, on Hanamu, they can fly a D.Va up here to do something. They can fly someone up here to do something. They can send her down onto an objective um, with less risk, like with less commitment. Essentially, she can easily drop from a high ground, uh, for example, on King's Row. So you can much easier with, with a diva. you can easily drop down from the high ground and fly straight back up, uh, right? So doesn't really help that much against goats as you will have to just ring it, but you can easily drop down here, do something, and then just fly back up. Um, that is like the big, big thing. Um, it also, again, as I said, like it denies a lot of things um, in, the, in the terms of just how vertical she is, right? That's, for example, she can fly over here and do something and start dealing a lot of damage from this angle. Um, she can fly and contest someone over here. She can matrix the entire team. So you have a lot more like defensive setups with a diva. So I think I have a bunker with a diva in it. I hope I have diva bunker. Okay, so I built this. Let's use this. Okay, so you have a hands, you have a junk rat, right? Uh, you have normally this. A lot of times this will be a widow. That's like the the, the the very common one to see. But this would be a widow. So I'll actually just swap it out with a widow just to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, a great widow. Okay. So this is a very, very common one. Um, normally, this is played numerous ways. We already talked about the rotation for here to get to go, go close and start. Um, again, you have to, at that point, watch out that the Widowmaker will start pressuring these LOSs, right? And that's where your Diva or your Lucio will come into play to deny this high ground to force her back here. So there's not a lot of angles it can take. Besides that, you will normally also see um, halts with mines coming in here from the from the bunker comp, which, again, halts need to be eaten by the Diva and so on. But again, rushing close here is to try to just force them to drop. And that point is to, as a bunker comp, uh, as a ghost comp, against this bunker, is to try to deny whatever sniper they have to have too much roam, like free room to do it. Because you don't want them to drain too many resources from you. You want them to be like, okay, they're getting one, two ticks. Now we need to drop. Now they have lost all their shields, all their resources. Not, okay, they don't have shields or resources anymore. Now we drop, right? So it's really about fine managing your, your the amount of damage that you will take uh, as a ghost team. And sitting on very close to immediately try to punish the the Orisa and so on when they drop down. Um, besides that, again, all second always works. This works less efficient against this team composition as he is very easily disengaged. He is very, very, very easily disengaged. He can very easily hide, especially in this map, uh, in stairs uh, with a trance. Right, and that point the same with her. She can also very much disengage. At that point, like if the if the if they want to scatter, it's like three four players at max in the main group. So it works less efficient than what you would do, but it still works just fine to set up uh, an old stack and to win this with that. Um, surrounding and pressuring is again a problem with this team composition. It, it definitely does work, um, but at that point again, you still because again with more mobile DPSs, these triple DPS quad DPS team composition does work. Uh, is a little bit more difficult to play just because of the verticality of really good watermaker players, really good McCree's, really good um, 
<laughs> I was about to say Torbjorn players, Hansa players, anyone else really. Um, the verticality they can have, like the versatility in team fights, is just makes everything much more difficult and puts more on tanks and also other DPSs in really doing a good job at saying you cannot play here, you cannot play here, so you need to fall back, you need to fall back, and now there's a lot of pressure right here, right? That is like, doing that is like the important part here. Slamming, consistently hitting them with tanks, hitting their tanks with your tanks to essentially deny space and put a lot of pressure on them to also do that the supports cannot support their DPSs. They have to put all the resources into the tanks while also being able to spot and take duels against their uh, snipers and whatnot. Um, a dive works really good against us. This is like the, the, the ideal dive comp that you want to run against because it it has such a weak main group comparatively to a dive comp right the widowmaker cannot really fight there she has to disengage which shields the matrix and all that it can be very difficult for her to get picks um junk work while he can do a lot he's also incredibly easily bursted and he normally have to then at that point disengage with most of his tools which will split him off from the bank for the bunker team that can't really do much the diva has to peel for the orissa and the senyala and then while the mercy can fly she is very also very easy to chain, chain down and punish. So a, a dive composition works really, really great against this. A team that doesn't fly around or try to weaken too much, well, that is possible. But a more, we will all in on your tanks as you have a much weaker main group against us. Um, works really great if you don't want to just, again, rotate straight to point, play close. Um, or even try to force a, a rotation out for the enemy team. Um, and do some form of debate. We saw this, of course, with the very famous uh, LA Gladiators where the... The Titans, uh, no, where the Gladiators forced their rotation out um, from, I believe it was the Spitfire. Um, and of course, the Spitfire then dropped and did their, did, their prop, they did their proper rotations like they normally would, exposing the back line to Shurfo's Widowmaker, and he just absolutely cleaned up. It's a very, very common, uh, very like textbook uh, example of, of thinking out of the box. So that's Bunker Comp. That is how you deal and counter with Bunker Comp. Uh, like the video and all that stuff. If you want to hire me as a private coach, it doesn't matter if you're bronze or top 100. Um, I, uh, it's 50 years worth of our session. You can hit me up on our Discord server and I can help you rank up and get better at the game. No matter what rank you are, I've got a bunch of GM and top 100s lately. Um, so if there's more of you guys, then I would be glad to compare notes uh, as there's been a resurgency in higher tier players right now as of late. It's been really fun to be working on that level again. But also lower level players, again, you're always welcome. Uh, working a lot with you guys is always fun. Um, besides that, uh, there will be coming a video on LA like Gladiators versus the Titans, um, probably out tomorrow or something like that, if it's if my automatic upload works. So check that out. It's going to be a really in-depth, uh, more in-depth guide of uh, how the Valiant beat the Titans. So yeah, uh, I hope that you like this video. Again, it's very much in-depth. Tell me if this is too long videos or if you hate them or love them or so on. This is more of like a ramble coaching style for information and game sense. Um, I'll vlog through that. What's up, guys? I hope you guys have a lovely little summer. Uh, I love you guys very much. Please take care of yourself. Positive. As always, my name is Joe. You guys, keep going.